Hello, this is Mr. Vanier. If I'm here to give you all the details of the great insect adventure. So I know before school was shut down with the whole COVID-19 uh, coronavirus thing, many of you were asking, hey, Mr. Vanier, when are we going to get to do the insect project? I sure hope we're going to be able to get to do the insect project. And so here we have it. I'm going to give you all the details for those of you that have been saving insects, that are tired of being inside and want to get outside. And so if you take a look here, um, this is the COVID-19 edition. This project is optional, but a fun way to get students outside to do real science in the role of an entomologist. All right. So you're going to be turning these projects in uh, by May 28th, and I'll go over all the details of how you're going to be turning it in a little later. Now, um, here's just the reason why we're doing this project, if you choose to. And down here, it just talks about the next generation science standards, how it supports them in the core ideas, four of them here, cross-cutting concepts, science and engineering practices. I will make a video going into great detail, super interesting about how it supports next generation science standards. All right, so let's talk about the requirements. Number one, you need 10 insects. How many? 10, that's it, 10. I mean, I'm just looking at this one right here. I think this person has over 20, 21 for their project. Obviously one didn't come from Ramona. That was uh, too big for Ramona, right? Here's another one. Uh, I think this one has 13. But you just need 10. Trust me, it'll be easy, but you just need 10. And you want them to be, just look over the guidelines here, you want them to be in the best shape, uh, pinning technique, labeling. I'll be going over all of that, that each of them have a card that you've sketched and you've made some observations about that insect. All right? Now, right here, number two, it talks about required and optional orders. So... There are six that are required. You need these six here and then these other optional here, okay? So you need at least one coleoptera, which is a beetle. You need one diptera, which is a fly or a mosquito. And you can Google these and find out what else is in that scientific order. Hymenoptera, a leafhopper, or there's other options in that order. Hymenoptera right here. It'd be ants, bees, and wasps. Uh, you've got Lepidoptera, of course. That's going to be your moths and your butterflies. Orthoptera, which is going to be grasshoppers and crickets, okay? One of each of those. And then you can choose four other from this list here. I'd probably stay, uh, maybe we did already remove the sucking lice. Yeah, 24, I'd stay away from the lice there. Maybe 15, the chewing lice. But there's, uh, you know, cockroach, earwigs. I saw two of those coming into my classroom today. A flea, um, silverfish, you've got, you know, you can have another beetle and another uh, moth. So let me go over here and take a look. Yep, so you need six from here, and you need four other here. It makes a total of 10 insects. Um, and again, beetles, I mean, they're so easy to find. They're everywhere, right? You only need one, or you can have up to two, but they can't be the same. So here's some that are found in uh, San Diego. You've got your metallic green fig beetle, or this one right here is a longhorn wood boring beetle. I see these all over Ramona. I believe this one's a 10-stripe June beetle. Uh, this one's a scarab beetle found in San Diego here. And then many of you have seen this one before. It's kind of walking with its behind up, right? It's booty up in the air. People call them a stink bug. So these right here are the dartling beetles because this has been fused together so they're a flightless. They can't fly. Uh, beetle, but those are really common. And these are super cool. These are called the ironclad beetles. Um, really, I accidentally just came into my driveway and then I looked over that I ran over this beetle and the thing just walked away. These things are super duper tough. All right. So that is uh, requirement number two. Let's go to three restrictions. So they, you, we don't want any. Um, larvae or we don't want any nymphs really small ones. We want it adult sizes. Moths are really hard to identify with so try to stay away from just the grayish ones although if that's all you can get that's fine. We are looking for some variety in your collection. Okay so this is an adult beetle. This would be the little larvae thing. We don't want those in the collection. Also be really careful of uh, in insects that can sting. If you're allergic to any hymenopters, bees, wasps, things like that then stay away from those. 
or you might want to find those when they're already dead. This is a tarantula hawk or a pepsin wasp. Many of you are familiar, it will sting the tarantula, paralyze it, drag the tarantula back down into its hole, lay an egg on top of there, and then it will begin to feed on the paralyzed but live tarantula. So the tarantula becomes like a living baby bottle. Kind of creepy, but you know, it's a tough world out there uh, is natural, uh, in the natural world. Also, you don't want to get sting by, stung by one of those, although one of my students caught one in a net and did get stung in the finger. They're very, 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 very painful. Uh, so that's number three. Number four is collecting your specimens. Uh, there's a link here so you can where to find them. Please again catch them. Um, don't go purchase them, you know, at Cahoots and get a cricket or something. Try really to go find them and don't pick insects up, insects up with your bare hands like we've already mentioned or you could get stung. So collecting them. You can uh, try to find a butterfly net or maybe get one at the 99 cent store or you can even make one. There's a link on the handout showing you how to make one out of a coat hanger and like a, I think it's a pillowcase. So there's my son and his friend Nick uh, when they were going to Francis Parker here and they were just on campus looking at flowers and under leaves and in the grass. Really easy. So here's in number four. It's a list of where to find things. Okay, and then I've got some ways of collecting and I've updated it. So let me go over here, take a look. Yep, so they're everywhere. You know, you lift a piece of wood over, look on a rock. Um, um, you can find insects almost everywhere if you just slow down, take some time, and begin to make some observations of the natural world. So here, these are all links right here. So right here, we've got um, how to make an insect net out of a tennis racket. In a pillowcase. There's an how to make another one out of a coat hanger. Uh, what's this one? This one is, oh, that one's really cool. That's a beater sheet. Um, I'll show you how to do that and collect insects. You've got your insect pit fall traps here. There's two of them. How to make a light trap. Those are really, really cool. Uh, let's see this one. Yeah, there's some really cool science here. So take a look at some of those links. All right, let's move on here. Drawing. So you've got 10 insects. You're going to need 10 sketches. Again, you can take them with pictures with your phone, but we want you to actually sketch them out. You can do them on index cards or pieces of paper. But it just helps you to really start looking at their structure and their function and their mouth parts and their eyes. And there's so much detail to insects. Amazing. So you need 10 of those. Um, relaxing your insect here. If they get too stiff, um, where you can put a pen through them, you can put them in a jar with like a wet sponge in the sun and it kind of makes a little sauna there and kind of loosens them up. Especially if you find your insects already deceased, dead. Um, they're going to might be a little stiff. As it'll loosen them up, there's a video clip right here and that will help moisten them so they're not as fragile. Pinning the insects. Um, so most people find like a shoe box and then they put a piece of cardboard in the bottom. And again, I normally have insect pens here, but you can find some pens at home or uh, maybe at one of the craft stores if they are open, like Michael's. Uh, but again, you, when you pin the insects, I have all sorts of links here on YouTube, but you always want to pin them on the right side of the thorax here, or if it's a true bug here, with the dops fly here, true fly here, coleopters, beetles here, here, butterfly right there and there. Now, if something is too small to put a pen through it, what you use is a thing called a pointer. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Um, there's one right here. It looks like an aphid. And it's so small. Uh, let me see if I can find another one. There's another one. It looks maybe an ant right there. See that one? Okay. And so that, what you do is you get a piece of cardboard and you cut a little triangle. You put the pen through the wide part of the triangle put a thing of glue on the small end of the triangle and then you just put your ant right there or your flea or your insect. Actually this one is, um, yeah, this is my son's project from about five years ago. He's got his uh, table of contents on the back and then a QR code. If you hit that, it, I think it takes you to a video about um, his project. All right, let's move on here. And labeling your insects. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Each insect has uh, two labels. Here's the size. Of those labels, you can cut those out of paper or index card. Tells you what needs to be on the top, gives you an example. On the bottom, gives you an example. 
Again, most people can find the GPS coordinates by just looking that up on your computer or your phone, and it will locate where you're at, especially if you catch most of them around your house, and it will give you those coordinates. Because what if you find a new insect species that's never been discovered, and you're like, ah, I don't know if that's true. Well, when I was in Gabon, Africa, doing termite transects uh, for 10 days, they discovered new termite uh terrestrial termite species from Gabon, Africa. Uh, I think it was um, Paul Eggleson from the uh, Natural History Museum of England that all our specimens went to, and they were the ones uh, determining if there were new species uh, that we were collecting. All right, so here we go. Number nine, your final project. Like I mentioned, you can put it in something fancy like this or just a, a shoe box. Let's see if we've got some of the examples here. Um... Yeah, there's examples from the cards. We already went over that. There's some kids working on the labels. Oh, this one's kind of cool. Uh, well, let me see the... Uh, let's see here. Mm, specimens here. Yeah, so here's a couple. Just to give you an idea of what people have done in the past. Picture frames, shoe boxes. Some get real fancy. Some are real simple. Um, old picture frame, piece of styrofoam, like that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, some people color their cards. Uh, this is a video of a student's project, but let's see. But again, I really want you to have fun with this project, right? Look, someone found some flies that were dead, and they made a little sketch. Insects are really cool. And there's looks like some insects that are sunbathing. So let's come back over here. So the final project, it tells you what it needs to be in, how you need to arrange that. Um, last thing I want to talk about are how to um, catch insects, okay, to make some traps. So let me find that part in this presentation. Here we go, right here. There we go. Types of traps, okay? Now... This is Nick and Umet. Umet, um, it was against his religion to kill absolutely anything. He's sick, is his religion. And he said, I can't kill anything. My whole family's vegetarian. I said, no big deal. And so I said, there's plenty of places you can find insects that are already dead. So every one of these insects here in his project were already found dead, except this last one, which is a monarch butterfly. He caught it. He took a picture of it, printed it out, cut it out, and then pinned it, and then let it go. Okay? So again... Uh, let me show you some traps. One, if you look in window sills, especially if there's like a blind there, you're going to find so many insects that are already dead. Uh, you've got crane flies, you've got mosquito eaters, you've got regular flies, horse flies, all sorts of stuff's in there. Uh, maybe if you have a garage and then there's a window sill in there, you could check. So that's called the window sill trap. This one right here is called the swimming pool trap. So you might have a fancy swimming pool like this. I do not have a fancy swimming pool like that. So I have one from Kmart that costs $16 with octopus and a little slide on there. I fill it up with water, and every day I check, and there's insects that are dead inside that pool. But if you have a pool like this, you'll see insects or in the filter. So you can play and just let them dry out, right? Another type of trap was the car radiator trap. So again, you want to make sure once the car, you know, your car is back home, now you make sure it's cool and you don't burn yourself and it's uh, cooled down. But many people have got some amazing insects from that trap. I've had some dragonflies and some really cool um, large bumblebees. Um, all right. The light trap. This is me, uh, I don't know, a long time ago in Gabon, Africa, collecting insects in a light trap about 150 feet up in a tree in the uh, yeah rainforest in uh, Gabon, Africa. Here's my son few years later with a sheet in front of our house with a light and you can see insects are attracted to the light here and he got quite a few insects doing that and he's just kind of showing off his light trap what else do we have let's see yeah we got the wind i covered that one swimming pool one radiator meat can sheet light trap um let's see making a net we'll talk about that i did and yeah, so there's some links to how to make, where did it go? Yeah, so how to make some of the traps right here. Okay, making a net, I think we talked about that. Yeah, I think we're good. So 
I'm going to be making four, three or four other videos of just giving you the reason of why we're doing the insect project, why it's so important to study insects, and how amazing and uh, gl glorious and beautiful insects are. They really make you wonder about a lot of things. Um, so that'll be in the next video. So hopefully this was helpful.